are, in your opinion, the essential skills and characteristics that a director should have for managing a museum? To direct a museum is a very complex business, but there are, let's say, three fundamental skills. The most important is to be a good gardener, because the prime function of a director is to encourage staff to grow. You have to find out what people are good at, you have to allow them to do it, you have to motivate them, because the basis of any museum is going to be the people who work there first. The second real function of a director is to manage, is you have to manage two elements. You manage basically two things, economic resources and human resources, time and money. So you have to define a scope, you have to decide what the museum is about and what it should be doing, whom, to whom it should be speaking. And then you dedicate human resources, time, and economic resources, money, to achieve your goals. And the third uh, real competence of a good director is communication. You have to be a good actor because you have to be able to go to any group, it could be politicians, it could be local uh, community members, it could be political leaders, and you have to explain why the museum matters. You have to make an argument. And you have to do it in a language people understand. You can't just talk about what you're interested in. You have to understand to whom you're speaking. And you have to be able to make a good show. So you have to be a gardener, an actor, and a manager. suggest us some inclusive and participative strategies for making art and cultural heritage accessible to everyone. The starting point for developing any museum project is to listen. So the best ways to create inclusive strategies are to create projects that aren't finished, that are proposals that people can comment on. So instead of doing an exhibition all finished and marble and gold, you make something rough and ready, you put it in the town square and you say, what do you think of this? So you create essentially a series of working prototypes. The best way to guarantee participation from the community is to take them seriously, respect their, their history, respect their voices, and create ways in which they can contribute to developing something. If the community is involved in prototyping, if the community is involved in commenting on the labels, you might write a label that said in 1956, these people came from there and they say, no, 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 it wasn't like that. My, we came earlier or we came from another place. So in order to get that involvement, you have to create things that aren't perfect, things that aren't finished and propose them in order to develop them together. How can museums deal with digital culture and which are in particular some current projects of Brera concerning the use of multimedia and social networks? Well, we're very, here at Brera we're very careful about digital in the sense that unlike certain kinds of museums, let's say an archaeological museum or a natural history museum, you can actually use digital as a means of interpretation. I can take my phone and I can look through it and see something like the reconstruction of a temple. In a museum like Brera, when you have Brera, um, Caravaggio, I don't let anything get between the visitor and Caravaggio. So we actually don't use a lot of tech digital technology in the museum. On the other hand, digital technology allows you to reach new audiences, to uh, create new material on, with video, uh, with different kinds of online courses, with different kinds of offers. So what for us Brera does is we have a very rich website, our website includes, for instance, portraits and intervi interviews with all the staff about what they do, called My Brera, so that it's kind of a portrait of Brera. It's also, uh, digital allows us to create uh, tools for inclusion, for listening to voices, for listening to other communities, for feedback. So digital and, and social, so Instagram, Twitter, all the uh, Facebook, all allow us to listen and to respond to our audiences in a way that a museum has to do if it's going to stay connected with its community. How can museums keep up with the changes in society? Well, let us hope that museums are part of the changes of society. Uh, museums have to remember that they are always contemporary. So museums uh, have to not turn backwards and look only to the past. They have to obviously look to what's going on. But that involves new, me new media, listening to your publics. It involves creating working prototypes and proposing to your community. It involves 
being open to as many different uh, publics as you can. This involves things like accessibility as well. It involves labeling that's uh, readable, that's understandable. It involves uh, physical accessibility. It involves linguistic accessibility. Uh, a single language won't work if you expect other people. You want to have your interpretation of a museum in all the languages that you can, either digitally available on a, on a, a phone or as a label. Here in Brera, we have everything in English uh, and in Italian. Um, in uh, Germany, I ran a museum where we had a very important Islamic collection. It was labeled in German, English, Turkish, and Arabic. What we saw from the moment we put Arabic and Turkish labeling, we saw the number of Turkish visitors go from 3,000 a year to 35,000 in one year. Simple thing. Speak the language of the people who, who own the collection. It was their collection, they felt proud of it, and they could read about it and tell about, uh, talk about it in their own language. These kinds of strategies are inclusive and are a way a museum stays listening to its public. How can museums educate the community in the awareness of its cultural heritage? I think this is part of the same issue is you have to create imperfect proposals that the community can can embrace for instance in frankfurt again with this community remember that in frankfurt we had a very large um, immigrant population a uh, turkish population who came to germany in the 1950s and 60s as gastarbeiter now when they came to germany they they sometimes only had two suitcases and they brought they distilled their whole life into two suitcases of things that were precious to them. So we did a program where we asked the grandchildren of these people to interview their grandparents, to say, to tell their grandmother, give me one object you brought. You brought this piece of carpet, why? And the grandmother would say why she chose that and not something else. So the children helped create a history of the experience of their grandparents around an object. So this does many things. It involves the community. It also tells you the value of heritage, because heritage can be your grandmother's teapot. Heritage can be a teddy bear. Heritage is something that you preserve from the past to take with you to the future. It can also be a Caravaggio. It can be a Mantegna. It depends who you are and what you're collecting. Museums serve as a collective memory for society. So we take to the future in the suitcase different things. We take Caravaggio. But your grandmother might have brought a precious teapot or a ring that her mother gave her. And heritage is about giving value to the things you bring from the past to the present in order to pass to the future. Mm -hmm.